next year. She wants to drive in Cup, but only if it's a competitive ride. And if you look at the landscape of the Cup Series right now, there certainly aren't a lot of competitive rides open. So I think she has very narrow focus here on where she would want to go. She said in her statement today that she's focused on 2017, Steve, and that you know wherever things take her, she's good with it, basically. Uh, she's been talking in these very zen terms lately when um, people have asked about the future. She said to me on my podcast last month that the things that make her happy right now are watching her two dogs play with each other. Um, that's the kind of place that Danica Patrick is in right now. She's had this very uh, carefree attitude of, I don't feel the weight of anything anymore. And as you know, Steve, she's got a lot of other things going on outside the car. She's got a winery. She's got an athleisure brand. She's got a book that's coming out soon. She said that all of those things aren't an escape plan, but she also has said she doesn't have a timeline for finding something for 2018. She told me she's just going to go with the flow. So I, I think it's fair to say right now there's a, there's a chance she couldn't be racing after this season. Yeah, I think there's a chance. I think it's a, a larger chance that she won't be in a car than she will be just because of the race teams available and the seats available. But I think you mentioned the business model she's built outside of the race car, very successful. Heck, in Richmond, her brand was her sponsor at Richmond. So obviously very successful outside of the race car. And listen, this is an IndyCar race winner. This is a pole sitter at Cup in the higher series, has led laps in the Daytona 500, has outperformed at what I consider very difficult racetracks, maybe Martinsville and Atlanta. And while she hasn't reached the success that she would like to reach, obviously, and she tells, has told us and told the public she's disappointed with some of her efforts in the race car, I've never questioned her desire to win races. I mean, she's potentially a top 100 driver in the country. The problem is she's going against top 5, top 10, top 20 drivers in the country. So she's given it a valiant effort. Um, but it seems to be that outside of the car, she really moves the needle. So it'll be interesting to see where her priorities go from here, DJ. Yeah, that's the difficult part of this business is that there, there are so many talented drivers out there. And, and she came into a world that has been dominated by men, and, and she performed very well and at, at a high level a, a lot of different times. But uh, you have to do this on a regular basis for, for it to be beneficial for the sponsors. And so, um, you know, she I, I think she's a name uh, that everyone uh, associates with, especially young people out there. You know, they, they understand the commitment that it takes. And she's made that commitment. You know, it hasn't been because of lack of effort on her part to become a better race driver and understand she came into a sport with, with race cars like she had never driven before uh, and, and worked extremely hard to be as good as she could possibly be there. So uh, you, you talk about wanting to be with a competitive team, well, you've, you've got a champion in Matt Kenseth that doesn't have a ride either. So uh, they, those rides aren't out there just everywhere. Yeah, and I would just say, DJ, again, like I think her, her on-track legacy is fairly secure as the first woman to lead the Indy 500, first woman to lead the Daytona 500, first woman to win a Daytona 500 poll. Uh, I know she wanted more than that. I think she would have liked to have gotten wins. But I think that at this point, she has accomplished pretty much everything she ever could have intended to in NASCAR. And as you know, Steve alluded to, and, and I said, she's got a lot of other things going on around outside the car that she could fall back on. She said 